We are very, very happy to have you here. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. Did you play in Denmark earlier? Uh, a very long time ago, yeah. in 1991. So ah, it, that means yeah. 25 and a half years ago. So oh, oh, oh. it was a close tournament in Kinterminde. Kinterminde. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and, and Fiona Island. Yeah. Yes, and okay, there were just 10 players. Uh, Best the masters of those times and some foreigners and finally I think I shared your second place with Coach Hansen. Yeah, so he plays again now, you know. Yeah, but not here. Yeah. Not here, no. <laughs> you enjoy it here? Yes, it's very nice place. Actually, it's uh, hard to feel the time in Denmark because Denmark is supposed to be a Nordic country, but here it's just like to be, I don't know, in Spain or in Turkey or in Greece. Wait, so wait, 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 you can go. On. You can go to the beach uh, between no, the no, cases. It's raining so. there, saying. So. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay so. But um, uh, let me start just just briefly. Uh, your playing style and, and development of playing style. You were known for you know fire and ball and ball and okay. complicated games and everything. So where I go, my book, yeah. yeah. Do you think how did your playing style develop with age or experience? What were your strong sides and how it's developed? Well, I never really uh, thought about developing the style. I mean, uh, my aim was always try to play the best chess I can. And so it's, uh, uh, I just thought that if player wants to play a good game, good chess, he cannot avoid complications. So because if you start avoiding complications by purpose, then it means that you're doing something wrong and maybe yes. your opponent can use it in some ways, so yeah. So that's uh, why I, I never thought that uh, I'm a specialist striving for the complications, but okay, they just appear themselves. And um, But you like complications? Mm, well, I, I cannot say I like them so much, it's just that uh, if I feel that I have things under control, then of course I like complicated positions. Yeah. So okay. If I feel that uh, uh, I see more than my opponent uh, sees, then it's okay. <laughs> but it's not also the, uh, always okay. the case. It's, uh, okay. But I definitely don't. Okay. Uh, the other thing is that, for example, I don't uh, think about, let's say, making a draw out of uh, an opening. For example, uh, I never offer draw to my opponent. I never, uh, I, I never do this like in complicated positions. I offer draw. Let's see what yeah. happens. Uh, the, uh, so play. yeah, I just play, yeah. and then yeah. Uh, yeah. and then sometimes can, uh, nice. big complications can arise. And maybe they will remove uh, remove the draw <laughs> from the move something. Yes, yes, yeah. But uh, yeah, that's why I was um, when the Sophia rules appeared. I said, okay, I played under those rules all my life, so I'm not problem about it. Of course. Um, <laughs> Um, uh, your, your chess career, you had a long, you met a lot of chess stars and, and, mm. and good players and other players. What uh, okay, uh, the what players uh, yeah. impressed you the most? Which players? Well, of course, uh, I was uh, witnessing the development of Magnus Carlsen, so it's yeah. <laughs> it's an easy answer because the first time I played <laughs> him uh, in uh, Drummond in 2004, so he was yes, 14 yeah. years yeah. old and. So he beat me in a complicated game. Oh. Even that was the only uh, game I lost in the tournament. I was still, uh, uh, I still tied for first place, not with Carlson, but with somebody else. But, uh, uh, but at least, okay, I could already see that his um, very strong calculation skills and very strong play complicated positions. Then he also became famous for his end game technique. And yes. I realized that, uh, that his strength is that he just able to play any kind of positions on equal strength and that's why he, he's so strong and wins so many games. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, yeah, other players going back in time or mm, well of course Kasparov was always very yeah. impressive with his preparation because yes. uh, uh, I mean you get kind of out of opening that's what you think. Uh, but in fact he is still in his opening book and he <laughs> <laughs> he simply had, uh, makes three four moves which he at least yeah. thought about uh, before the game and when you already have to find your way on the board yeah. but, uh, in that case in that sense he had big advantage over his opponents so. yeah. but now it would be much more difficult for him to have this advantage so he stopped playing yeah. chess at the right moment in this <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. Yeah. and going even further back to the Spassky generation or oh. you met some of these guys also of course, of course. 
Well, I'm from Riga, so we can't tell us from Riga, so it's an easy one answer again. No, just for you. And you know, from Riga, we also have our own Nunso, which then lived to Denmark. And recently, I thought that although everybody knows that he's from Riga and he lived in Riga for many years before moving to Germany, but we can't find any of his games played in Riga, so he was mostly in, oh. in Germany or in Denmark. So, so it's also whether so it's a good question whether we can call him Latvian player or not. But okay, of course he's a player born in Latvia. Yeah. But okay, I mean, he wasn't very impressive to me. I mean, uh, it's, uh, but he was uh, like a grandfather teacher yeah. of chess. Uh, yes. Uh, there are two Danish players uh, writing a book about him, so which you know, mm -hmm. a very detailed book of oh, his, okay. his, his, But that's, that's a different story. Um, okay, in fact, oh. and Nimsovich works uh, were quite detailed uh, yeah, themselves exactly, yeah. because yeah, he was based uh, his uh, theories on his own games. So, but <laughs> so, so, so it's not so easy to understand which more details can be found, but okay, yeah. with the computers maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, you work a lot with the computers, of course, to maintain your strength and openings and everything. Oh, well, maybe, how do you keep maintaining them? Mm, well, of course, uh, computers is what came to our life. And cannot avoid that. Mm. But sometimes I look at critical lines with computers, sometimes I, can, I just think in my head what, uh, uh, what kind of game I want to play. No, 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 not, no, 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 of course not. Uh, but uh, on the computer screen, sometimes I turn engines, sometimes I don't turn engines. So, uh, okay. uh, yeah. for example, when I don't have that much time before the game, I prefer just to study some games from the database to see the human ideas in the position yes. and uh, just think over them. And so, so when, okay, at home, if you want to make deeper analysis of some line, of course, you need to but use engine. But during the tournaments, mm -hmm. uh, very often I don't use much engine because uh, it's because we are here person against person. So it's yeah, you're not a slave on the computer. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, from your long career, what are your dearest memories? Of course, I know no facts from your career and everything, but what are your dearest memories? Oh, uh, I think when I qualified for this, um, uh, for the final way against Amant um, yeah, from yeah. in New Delhi. So, um, yeah. okay, although that final I lost uh, in Tehran, but still, to get to the final was, of course, uh, great uh, achievement for me. Yeah. Of course, it's yeah. uh, something that should stay with me for all um, times. But yeah. uh, and of course, I also have uh, special remembrance about Sofia 2009 when uh, Magnus Carlsen was already uh, yes. quite uh, not that young anymore. But <laughs> uh, and I managed to beat him in the last round and yes. uh, win the tournament. Yes. So, nice. so that's probably yeah. the highest point of my career. Yeah, revenge from 2004. Well, okay, yeah. more games. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but that's probably the highest point of my career. In 2010, I also won a strong tournament in Shanghai, but uh, that was over. Let's say I got there like my last big victory, and so the highest yeah, point yeah, is still yeah, Sofia. Yeah. So. Nice. So what do you think about the future of chess? And uh, maybe also for your own chess, but also the chess as such. Do you mm. think computers will kill chess or it will survive? Well, um, in a certain way, they already killed chess because, for example, imagine the tournament will play here. Uh, in the way it cannot even be considered like an official sporting event. It's more like a social event. Yes. Uh, that's because here you cannot, uh, to make a tournament like this, uh, you need to make some anti-cheating me measures. But yes. uh, yes. in fact, uh, yeah. there are none, and fortunately, uh, every, there is a reason to trust everybody. But it happens, we know. Yeah, and not maybe not here, but sometimes all over. Uh, some so somebody cheats now and then. So my opinion is that <coughs> chess, uh, let's say, as a sporting game, yes. chess should be rapid. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, rapid, right, yeah. rapid. Right. Because then yeah. it's at least nobody can go to a bathroom and look at his device. So the only way of cheating is to have a device in your ear. But then, if if you get caught, you can just easily be. Uh, then you just for, should be frustrated for all your life, but, uh, but then because then it's, uh, um, the other reason I believe that it's more interesting to have rapid tournaments because uh, I'm not sure whether it's so good that you have an opportunity to prepare for a concrete game. 
for your opponent. For example, for me, I, I feel a bit uneasy that, okay, imagine I'm playing a weaker player, yeah. but he has time to prepare for me before the game. So he looks all of my games, yes. all the lines with the computer, yes. and then I have to start thinking which line he hasn't prepared, because well, otherwise I'm playing against the computer, not against the girl. So, uh, so it's, uh, in my opinion, it's important to, of course it's important yes. to prepare to work on chess with a computer, but it's not good when somebody has an opportunity to prepare against a uh, yeah. concrete opponent. Okay, it's, uh, at least it feels uneasy, uh, especially when, but okay, of course it's, uh, so that's another advantage of rapid yeah. chess because you have uh, the most of games. Okay, you just know your opponent, you come and you play. But but uh, that's not, that's not the main advantage. The main advantage is that it's much easier to fight against cheating and yeah. Yeah. also at, uh, yeah. 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 So and also you can make uh, you can risk a bit, little bit more in rapid chess because yeah. in uh, in this chess you know that if you start playing something uh, wrong, it's uh, going to be punished. <laughs> but, yeah. He uses half an hour on this. <laughs> okay. And you would be playing chess yourself many years from now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, rapid right and. I like chess. So yes, of course. The problem is that, okay, maybe I became a little bit lazy because I had to work a lot <laughs> the times when I was among the world's strongest players, and uh, now I'm still kind of taking my holidays, but uh, it's time maybe to stop, to finish these holidays and start playing serious <laughs> chess again. <laughs> Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. We hope to see you back in Denmark again. Yeah. I hope to.